about building another thing out here. So we'll see what happens. Right now, it's just a, a lot of uh, attention is being paid to Premier because Lubbock has not had a theater like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the theaters we have are nice, uh, but if you go somewhere where they they have a lot of people selling tickets, you're not having to wait in line for 30 minutes or 45 minutes to get a ticket to the movies, and, and uh, you can uh, uh, you have all these places that are comfortable to go and wait for your movie to start. Uh, I think it's going to enjoy it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if, as far as I don't think anybody's going to say, well, I'm not going to go to Cinemark anymore. You know, I'm just going to go to Premier. I think they're just going to be looking and choosing which which uh, which one looks good to them for that time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know how or who determines like the movies that are shown on the IMAX and like how often they like cycle through and like change the movies that they're showing up? Well, there's a certain number of films. The, the studios will choose which films they want to pay extra for to have them formatted uh, for IMAX and shot in IMAX. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's not it, not every film is, is formatted that way. In terms of uh, uh, how they're getting their their films, uh, Premiere would like to have. They'd like to have every movie that the studios are releasing. They've got 16 screens to show them. Mm -hmm. Cinemark is using everything that they can legally use to go ahead. They've tried to block uh, Premiere from showing certain films by saying that they built too close to movie 16. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to, to hold up, but at this point in time, as I understand it, uh, uh, if Premiere has a film that can show at Tinseltown but not at Movie 16, if Movie 16 gets a film that can show at Tinseltown and not at Premiere, so the only winner there is Tinseltown, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and and the uh, the films that are coming in from studios, I think, as I understand it again, they'll probably just go, you know, one for Premiere, one for one for Cinemark, one for Premiere, one for Cinemark on there. Now, if a studio has already spent the money to have a film formatted for IMAX, mm -hmm. and there is an IMAX theater in town, uh, you can darn well be sure that they want to show it in IMAX on there. So uh, that may come into some kind of a of a battle later on if Cinemark tries to block it from going to an IMAX uh, to an IMAX theater. As far as who chooses the movies, uh, you know, Premiere will go ahead and uh, since they're the IMAX owner here in town, they'll decide which movies they want to bid on for IMAX. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, keep in mind, too, that there's so much politics that goes into that in terms of, uh, you know, in the old days, if you want this movie in December, you're going to want to show my movie here in August, you know, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Gary Moore has been in the game, and Skeet Norad has been in the game for so long that they know how to work with the studios. But they'll, they'll choose what movies that they want to show in IMAX, and they'll choose the movies they think will make the most money. Okay. Um, do you have any information on... Uh, I read... Or, yeah, I read that the cinema, Premier Cinemas, is donating uh, part of their um, food sales to the Big Brothers and Sisters Foundation today. Yeah, I, I didn't get a press release on that. Okay. Um... Do you but know? I'll call them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw. I, I went on their Facebook and I saw that they were doing that, and okay. I tried to. I tried to call them except to talk to the manager, but I figured he'd be pretty busy today, and I couldn't talk to him. So. Um, I'll send him an email and find out. If you want to leave your email, do that again. Okay. Um, is there the IMAX pricing is uh, separate from the regular pricing? Correct. Right. Um, it's is it fifteen for adults? Fifteen for adults and goes down to twelve dollars for uh, children, I believe. And there's there's only one IMAX theater, and it's the four hundred and twenty seat one. That's right. right. That's right. There's only one IMAX screen. Uh, 
I was out, out there when they were installing that screen, and that was a trip. Just watching that, you know, they had to be so careful. Have all of these guys up there trying to uh, unroll it and, uh, <laughs> and and try to put it up on there. But it's, uh, uh, it's as long as there's no vandalism or anything along those lines, it's, it should be good to go for quite a quite a long while. Okay. Um, yeah, it says the IMAX here is uh, 15 for adults, uh, $12 for children and seniors. And then they have the college discounts on Wednesday for all the all the movies and the IMAX movie goes down to twelve dollars for uh, college students on Wednesdays. Pretty good deal for college students, I suppose. Yeah, you can pick it up there on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, that's the other part. Um, I think I think Cinemark has got a student ticket price now, don't they? Uh, do they have a discount? I haven't been. I oh, okay. haven't been to the movies in a while, so. Okay. Um, are there any parts of this theater that are specifically designed for kids? Um, well, the, uh, the the party room, okay. uh, they call it Party Central. And uh, the thing is, is that if, if adults want to have a business meeting there, they can just take all the kids' stuff out and, and, and let them have the room for business meetings as well. But it was built for birthday parties and things along those lines. And of course, uh, you know, people can bring their own birthday cake in, but if they want pizza or if they want hamburgers, they're expected to buy them at the theater. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, so basically, it's a it's a pretty good deal because the fact that uh, you put a deposit down for damage, but but you don't have to pay anything to rent this this room for your parties. Uh, uh, almost said somewhere, Premier is going to make their money on the fact that you're going to get their their ice cream, their pizzas, their stuff like that that mm -hmm. they supply at the theater. Um, let's see. In terms of um, like food and the drinks and the snacks, you were saying um, they offered like Starbucks uh, and other products that I'm sure other movie theaters might not offer. Oh, yeah. Can, would you be able to expand on that? Uh, as far as the Starbucks, they've got the... They've got uh, six different espressos, they've got uh, uh, lattes, they've got hot tea, hot chocolate, uh, regular coffee, regular tea, and uh, uh, several different iced coffees, uh, coffee mocha. They've got quite a few, they've got at least a dozen offerings there. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a house margarita as far as their uh, uh, now the, I guess the coffee prices run from everything from just a dollar and a half to steam for steam milk up to five fifty it looks like. Uh, wines they've got five reds, four whites. Uh, they've got a sparkling Dom Perignon. They've got uh, two sweet sweet wines. They've got they sell it by the glass for seven or eight dollars. They sell it by the bottle for twenty eight to thirty two dollars. And uh, beer is uh, probably has whatever kind of beer you want, mm -hmm. and they've got uh, five dollar for domestics, and uh, goes up to six twenty five for uh, premiums, or a high price for six seventy five if you want a Guinness. <laughs> so you can uh, uh, you can't go up there and get a, a Bloody Mary or a gin and tonic, but but. Basically, if you just want beer, wine, or a margarita, and I think just frozen margaritas, not on the rocks, mm -hmm. uh, or if you want Starbucks, the Starbucks uh, coffee is at one far end of the concession stand, and uh, they've hooked it onto the concession stand, but it, it, it's notably where you can see with the cheap your, your coffee there. Uh, one other thing they've got is they've got a self serve area where you can come out of the theater and get free refills on your drinks uh, if you want. Or butter for your popcorn, or if you want free refills on your cokes and diet cokes and sprites and all that kind of stuff, you get free refills on those. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the, the concession stand is huge. You know, it's uh, uh, the box office is huge as well. So I think it's a matter of if they if they're going to have all those places staffed that are able to be staffed, uh, that things should go pretty quickly. The other thing about the concession stand. I think that this is going to hurt the tips for the bartenders and the waitresses upstairs, but you can actually get your beer and wine at the concession stand. Uh, you don't have to go to the bar if you don't want to. Uh, and in fact, I guess in terms of one-stop shopping, 
if there is a long line at the box office for movie tickets, and there's a line at the concession stand, you can just get in line at the concession stand and you can buy your movie ticket there as well. Hmm. Um, so you can actually go to the concession stand you can, and get your movie ticket, your popcorn, your Coke, and Dad's beer, and Mom's coffee, and uh, all in one line. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea, it sounds like. <laughs> They're trying to make it pretty people friendly, I'll, I'll go from that. Um, that's all I was just going that's all the questions I have. Is there anything else you'd like to add that maybe I didn't ask or I no, it's just a matter of I think some people may want to know just as far as the uh, the rivalry between Cinemark and, and Premier. Uh, these are competing businesses and uh, uh, Premier's attitude is we don't care if you have all the movies, we want all the movies, we think people will come to see us. Uh, and Cinemark's attitude right now is we want to protect what's ours, and uh, and they feel that that Premier built too close to movie 16. Uh, so there are some that think that this uh, blocking rule was made uh, just for when the uh, theaters were all grouped together in a downtown area. You had a bunch of single screen theaters on the same couple of blocks, mm -hmm. and you didn't want the same theater, same uh, movie showing at uh, two or more of those theaters. So they came up with a blocking rule. Uh, and they don't think that it really is accessible now that all the movie theaters are multiplexes and everybody has so many different movies. But it's still in effect right now. And so that's why uh, uh, Premier would have loved to have opened up their theater with, with Cloud Atlas on their IMAX screen. But they couldn't get it. Uh, movie 16 has Cloud Atlas and so they went their plan B was to go ahead and bring in the old Batman film and show it for a couple weeks until the James Bond film. Okay. Um, well, one last one. They're not showing, they're only showing like one or two movies in the IMAX right now, right? The Born to be Wild or well, something? Well, they're showing Born to be Wild, which is a documentary. Uh, it got rave reviews last year, but it's pretty much about, uh, uh, I think, chimpanzees that are poached or something like that. And uh, uh, they're showing that in the afternoons pretty much because they know that The Dark Knight Rises has already played out. And so mm -hmm. adults will want to come see it, perhaps see it on the IMAX screen. But as far as an all-day feature, uh, they're going to go ahead and show those documentaries you know, for the kids. Uh, and school groups. And they'll mm -hmm. like, still come in to see those. Uh, when the James Bond film comes here, I think that the right now you have five showings of the... 40 minute documentary and you have two showings a night of Batman and uh, I think when the James Bond film comes here it'll probably go to like two showings of the documentary and, and uh, maybe five showings of, of the James Bond film or it may, it may go to James Bond all day mm -hmm. uh, there's more money to be made you know in selling those uh, those twelve dollar tickets it's just six dollars for the documentary yeah. um, so uh, on the other hand they do want to show uh, I'm told anyway that they do want to show documentaries, and that because they do have a couple of those smaller theaters, that uh, eventually they will be used for some of these movies that we haven't been able to get into public. Some of these art films and foreign films and, and documentaries, and movies that have been showing up just at movie 16 on, on occasion uh, and nowhere else. And uh, if Premier can start bringing in, you know, some of these smaller films or independent films that we haven't seen. Uh, then you're really going to get the movie bus excited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you.